Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. I've been going through the transcripts of the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trials because I'm really enjoying looking at the sidebars, which were moments that we didn't get to see in the trial. If you were watching the trial coverage, those moments were silent. And if you were actually in the courtroom, they blast the courtroom with white noise so that even if you're sitting in the gallery, you can't hear what's being said during those moments. But now we have the transcripts and so now we can review them and have a look at what's going on. One moment I wanted to look at was the moment when Gina Duters was excused as a witness, which means she wasn't able to testify any further. And in fact, all of her testimony was struck from the record. Now, this was at the instigation of Eve Barlow. And it's actually kind of a miracle that Eve Barlow didn't find herself in a cell over this. Uh, let's go through all of this because I think it's kind of... Um, it's kind of astounding. Now, a bunch of this was reported at the time, but I still want to go over and look at it because there's some new details, some new aspects to it that weren't previously covered. So let's have a look. I'm just going to bring this up here. So this is Gina Duders, and this is the conclusion of her testimony. Um, so just so we have the cast of characters clear, who, who from this group was in Australia at this point? Now, I just want to stop here and point to look at Rottenborn over in the corner here. Um, he's <clears throat> sort of at that back seat. He's looking at a cell phone right now. Now, what we can't see because of just how the cameras were cut in and out is that that cell phone was provided to him by Eve Barlow. That's actually Eve Barlow's phone that he's looking at. Um, so we've got um, on the plane that I was on, it was Johnny... Jerry Judge, Stephen Dutas, um, Debbie Lloyd, and myself. So you see, they've got a lot of interest in this phone. He's calling Elaine over to have a look at it. This is causing a little bit of a flurry of activity over there. And maybe one of, maybe one other. Okay. Um, you mentioned the name there I don't think we've heard before. Can you just tell the jury quickly who Debbie Lloyd is? Okay. All right, so now all we're getting is the the static hum. That's on the original video. Nothing much I can do about it here. But this is when, uh, if you're sitting in that gallery, they're blasting with white noise. You can't see, you can't hear any of what's going on. So let's, um, let's cut over to the, uh, we'll just have a look at the transcript just so that we can look at what's actually being said here because during the trial, you wouldn't have, have seen this. So we'll just pull this up here. So we've got sidebars beginning with uh, Mr. Nadelhaft saying, Your Honor, may we approach? Um, court, okay, sidebar. So Mr. Rottenborn comes up and says, uh, We just got word that this witness has been posting this week. That's a very specific temporal thing. This week. On social media, facts about this case, her opinion about this case. I just wonder how someone who wasn't around at any point during the relationship considers themselves an expert, such as Ms. Duders. Here's a long letter she posted just this week. Our dear friend got a few wins in court this week, and yet some of us continue to belittle him. And counsel on the other side says, Mr. Or Mr. Moniz says, I've never seen this, Your Honor. This is not a witness under, I mean... And the court says, well, she's a witness. She's obviously not supposed to be watching the trial, correct? Now, keep in mind, the court has just been told that this was posted this week. Uh, Mr. Moniz says, well, yes. So the court says, so I can ask her questions on that. I will excuse the jury and I'll just ask her a couple of questions, okay? And Mr. Chu says, do you want me to send this to Sammy or... And the court says, no, I'm just going to ask her right now. So Mr. Chu says, okay. And the court uh, then uh, addresses the jury with, all right, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're going to just take uh, a few housekeeping matters up. So let's um, let's jump back to that. We'll just uh, pull this up and keep watching because there's going to be some bits that we actually do get to see. So right now they're still having that discussion um, and... You can actually hear just a little bit the white noise in the background. They've got it tuned way down, but I can hear it in my uh, in my earpiece there. 
focusing in on Johnny Depp while they're doing this. Uh, so they're having this discussion. You can see the judge is a little animated, but she's uh, ready to go here. Uh, this is this is something that's been dropped as a bombshell in uh, Ben Chu's lap here. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we just have to take a few housekeeping matters up, so we're just going to have you take a, a recess for a few minutes, okay? So again, no outside research and don't talk to anybody, okay? And you can tell she's got a headache right now. Just waiting for the jury Mr. to be Peters, excused. I just had a question for you. Have you been watching the trial this past week? Um, I've seen clips of it online, yeah. You've been watching, so you have seen parts of this trial? Yeah. Okay, and witness testimonies? Yeah, I've seen clips of it. You've seen it, thanks. Yeah. All right, does anybody have any follow-up questions? Uh, Ms. Ms. Duders, um, have you been watching it doesn't matter. She's been watching clips of witness testimony. So Judge A there asks, uh, does anyone have any follow-up questions? But really, there's not a follow-up question to save this. I'm just going to note here, even though the way uh, Ms. Duders ends up getting removed is a bit nefarious, um, and we'll talk about that, uh, that's coming right up, it is still proper that she gets removed once she's admitted that she's seen clips and there just isn't any way to save this the reason why witnesses are not allowed to watch testimony and not allowed to watch uh watch this is that you want each witness to be coming in a little blind you want them to not know what the other witnesses have uh, are saying because they shouldn't be able to coordinate and to um, to arrange to have their their testimony match if you've got two people who, you know, if you've got one person who says the car was blue, the other person should be able to say that the car is blue independently. Whereas if they don't, um, if they don't know, then that's a problem. There's actually an old joke about this uh, that really, I think, sums this up. And the joke goes like this. Um, so four people are driving along um, they decide, or it's four people have an exam and they decide to blow it off. They all get into a car, they go on a road trip, they're having a party, and later they come back and they tell the professor, hey, uh, we couldn't go to the exam because our car broke down. Uh, we had a flat tire and we couldn't, uh, we couldn't get to the exam in time. So the, the prof says, you know what, no problem. Um, no, not a big issue. Uh, we'll give you a makeup exam. So they think, awesome, this is great. They've got all this extra study time. They go to the people who did write the exam and they get all of the questions. They're ready to go. They figure they've got this. They're going to they're gonna nail it. And so they walk into the exam and the prof each hands them a sheet and sits in the front and makes sure that they can't talk to each other. And the exam has one question on it. Which tire was the flat tire? And the reason why that one works is because if they did actually get a flat tire, they should all know this and they should all have the same answer. But if they didn't and they're not allowed to communicate with each other, then their answers are going to be different. So that's really, um, that old joke is really why we, um, is really why we do this, is really why we do the exclusion of witnesses. Okay, so um, carrying on here. All right, you're excused, ma'am. You can have... Your excuse. Okay. Thank you. I will, I will instruct the jury that I'll have to strike the testimony of Ms. Dewars. There's a rule on witnesses, Mr. Monas. I understood, Your Honor. This is All the right. first word. I, 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 I believe that. I have no doubt in my mind that this is the first you've heard of it. Have a good day, ma'am. Thank you. I, 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 Ms. Berhoff, I got it the first time. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So what happens there is uh, the judge says, I'm sorry, I've got to remove her. 
And keep in mind, this was 35 minutes in. Uh, this is 35 minutes of time in a trial that was very, very carefully time kept and where timing ended up uh, being a huge deal. I had a line uh, that I, you know, I had a moment or that I was talking about was, was Kate Moss without a cross. And the reason why that happened is because they had their time and they brought, they actually, they screwed up and they ended up introducing Kate Moss as relevant. But Amber Heard's team didn't have the time left to be able to spend it on a lengthy cross-examination of Kate Moss. So that's what we saw. 35 minutes is a lot of time. There's a lot you can do with that. And towards the end, we were seeing these very short, sharp, uh, little moments of bring up a witness, get to what you need, get them off the stand. Because 35 minutes ends up being big. I don't think they got that time refunded. The court was saying, hey, um, Mr. Moniz, uh, you you got to know we got rules for witnesses. Now, um, he then says this is the first, you know, this is the first time. And the court says, oh, I believe that because she's the court is saying, I don't think you were doing anything malicious. I don't think you were doing anything wrong. So the quote here is, um, I have no doubt in my mind this was the first time you've heard of it. Basically saying um, to Depp's counsel there, I don't think you did anything wrong. Now, Ms. Bredehoff goes and manages to put her foot in her mouth. Uh, Your Honor, uh, we'll tell them to disregard. And the court says, I got it the first time. Thank you. Like, I already did say that I'm going to instruct the jury they'll strike the testimony of Ms. Duders. So why are you telling me again? Uh, don't don't get on the court's nerves, especially at this point when you're already you've just won this big thing. So why would they um, why would they do that? Um, so now then it continues on. Um, you know, afterwards, they took a recess. And then Mr. Moniz says, uh, Your Honor, may we approach? And the court says, sure. Uh, first of all, Your Honor, I want to make sure that it's clearly understood. The witness was advised on the rule on witnesses. We had no knowledge that she was watching anything. And the court says, I have no doubt in my mind. Again, confirming that the court isn't alleging any wrongdoing on the part of counsel here. Uh, Mr. Moniz says, I also want to clarify, and we understand the rule on witnesses, and this is a done issue. But I do want to clarify that even her violation order was really, I think, unintentional. She was basically being tagged in things on social media. She was not seeking out clips that were popping up on her feed. Again, we're not arguing. And the court said, no, she said that she hadn't witnessed anything, but she was very honest, which I do appreciate that she was watching. And I think this is one of those moments where you've got an honest witness and, you know, good for her even though it gets her removed from the uh, the case. Mr. Moniz says, uh, uh, well, also, as far as we can tell, the social media posts that were presented to the court as being from this week, we are unable to identify them on our social media pages because during this break, they would have gone through and actually looked at her social media to go like, hey, where did that, was that in there? And they couldn't find it. Uh, we understand that from talking to her. She said that there, again, I'm not arguing, the court is right, uh, but I do want to note that we do kind uh, we do take exception to the extent that there was any kind of well we understand that these were old posts that were presented as new posts and in kind of an ambush form. So we take exception to that um, because they were they they were presented by Rottenborn as though they were a week like this week when in fact they were not from that week. The court said, I didn't mention the post while she was on the stand because I just wanted to see if she'd seen anything. I don't need the posts or anything unless you want me to look at them. And there is a reason why they would want the court to look at them, which is, is there something um, shady going on? So Ms. Vasquez says, well, we do want you to look at them. They're undated on purpose, Your Honor. We believe on purpose, i.e. they're... Camille Vasquez is not mincing words. She comes out and she says, I think that this is basically a fraud being perpetrated on the court. Um, they're undated on purpose is saying, we think that this is deceptive. Um, they were handed to counsel for Ms. Heard by Eve Barlow. 
Eve Barlow is sitting in the first row. She's a journalist for The Guardian. She's also, I believe, friends with Ms. Hurd or maybe more. The court says, okay. Ms. Vasquez says she's been passing notes to Ms. Hurd during this trial. She passed up a cell phone with an undated screenshot picture of Ms. Duder's post that's two years old. That's highly inappropriate in our view. And the court says, I agree. Now, it's kind normally when you take a screenshot of an Instagram post, it's going to include the date. So going through and removing that is, is an interesting move. Uh, Mr. Chu says, we asked that she be removed from the courtroom. And the court says, well, the first row is supposed to be the legal team. Mr. Chu says, she's the girlfriend of Ms. Hurd who happens to work for The Guardian. It's wildly inappropriate. She passed up that misleading post to Ms. Hurd. Ms. Vasquez uh, notes, and passed up uh, notes to Ms. Hurd during testimony. And I have photographs of that. The court says, that's fine. Uh, Mr. Nadelhaft says, She's not, and the court interrupts to say, nobody of the legal team. We don't go into the audience picking things from uh, different people. Ms. Bredehoft, uh, then Ms. Bredehoft is trying to save this. And Ms. Bredehoft, I think, is actually making things worse. She says, she's a personal friend. She's traveling with her to and from. The court says, doesn't matter. From now on, the front row, it's only legal team, okay? No family on front row for either side. I said only legal team in the front row. There's plenty of seats in the courtroom. Um, now, there was plenty of seats at this time. Later on, there were not plenty of seats. There were, in fact, tons and tons of people who were being turned away. But at this stage, the courtroom was still fairly empty. Uh, the other thing is that there was actually, uh, later when uh, Amber's sister testified, uh, she initially got off the stand and got into that front row and then later got moved into the uh, the second row. So um, the uh, the court was pretty serious about that front row being only legal team. Mr. Chu repeats, uh, Your Honor, we asked that she be excused. The court says, as long as she's not in the front row and they have no contact. Ms. Vasquez says, shouldn't be allowed. She has her laptop open, Your Honor. Mr. Chu, she's passing... The court says she can't have her laptop laptop open anymore because she's not going to be in the front row. Mr. Chu says she's the one that passed that to Mr. Rottenborn without a date. That date was two years ago, which we just discovered. Now, it wouldn't just be that she passed it to Mr. Rottenborn without a date. Uh, we also know from looking at this, um, at, from looking at the sidebar, which we couldn't see. You could see that they blocked that out on on the trial date. Uh, that. She must have been the one who told Rottenborn that it was this week. Because how does Rottenborn say, oh, it's from this week, if he's not told that? He would have looked at this and said, what's the date on this? So Eve Barlow, by doing that, actually gets Rottenborn to mislead the court. She puts Rottenborn into a very difficult situation. And honestly... I have some sympathy for Rottenborn, but I have some criticisms for Mr. Rottenborn at the same time. The sympathy aspect is that, um, you know, it sucks if some third party gets you into trouble where you have now told the court something that's false because that you have an ethical obligation not to do that. But it's also partially on Mr. Rottenborn for not checking that himself. Now, that's partially because this is happening in an emerging situation. Uh, Duders is on the stand testifying. He's trying to respond in the heat of the moment. I get that. But Eve Barlow is not a person to be trusted. Uh, hopefully he learned that from this moment. So the court says, I don't care really about the semantics of that. I don't. I thought everybody on the front row was the family just sitting there or legal team passing notes back and forth. If I knew she wasn't part of the legal team, she wouldn't have been on the front row anyway. Both sides, both sides, Ms. Bredehoff, only people that are actually on your legal team. We made that first row so you could have communication with legal team, not with someone else, not with family, not with friends, okay? Mr. Rottenborn said, just for clarification, we also said they were part of the legal team. Court, no. <laughs> just no. Uh, and Mr. Maurice says, just to be clear, of course, says, let's be clear, just people who are employed in your office as legal people that work for you. And Mr. Rodbord says, I just want to make sure there's no intent to circumvent your order. And 
you can tell Judge A is, Judge Ascarati here is getting a little impatient. Uh, the court says, well, we're going to, this is what we're going to do now. Maybe I didn't make myself clear enough. There was a lot of family in, and I can see where there's confusion, but I think we just make a clear cut rule now that only people that work for you are on the front row, so you can interact with them to get files or folders, which was the whole intention to begin with, okay? Ms. Bredehoft, so for example, there are a couple that come up and she will sit in court. Of course, says, they can have no electronics, no nothing. They're just spectators. Ms. Bredehoft, okay, I understand. The court says there's no emailing back and forth, anything like that. Everybody understands me, right? Clear, clear, clear. Everybody's clear, right? Now, this is where I really love Judge A. Um, you can tell she's losing patience here, but she's still just like, let's get, let's be practical. She's not really chewing anyone out here, but she's saying, we're, we're going to make sure everything is clear so that nobody has any basis to complain if bad things happen to them for violating this. She's basically saying, you are now invited that if you want to F around, you can find out. So, uh, Mr. Moni says, we apologize for the disruption. Court, all right. So why don't we go ahead and get that situated, inform everybody on those rows right now, and then we'll go from there. And then, uh, then they proceeded. Um, so Ms. Bredehoft also notes, when we included the names we also included amber's assistant because she's been sitting there so all right um that's sort of how that uh, begins now what gets uh, what happens later which is widely reported is we get a court order and the court order comes out um upon consideration of plaintiff's motion to exclude eve barlow from the courtroom for pendency of trial plaintiff's motion any opposition and being fully informed it is this 15th day of april 2022 hereby ordered as follows plaintiff's motion is granted which means eve barlow has been kicked out of the courtroom that's what this order says she does not get to come in everybody saw that every that was widely reported and then we also had the transcripts and this was available uh, quite a bit ago but it's we're still going to go over just talking about this moment so this is the uh, the preliminary matter where where Eve Barlow gets kicked out because it's really interesting to compare what we saw in the sidebars with what happens right here. All right, and this might be a little hard to read, but I'm going to be reading it to you. So yeah, uh, so the court. Okay, have we got the court reporter? All right, is this your matter? Mr. Chu says, yes, Your Honor, very briefly. Good morning, Your Honor. May it please the court. Ben Chu, have we sworn in? Uh, I apologize. Court says, raise your right hand. Please stand for me. I just can't see you. Thank you. So they swear in the court reporter. And the court says, sorry, I apologize. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chu says, good morning, Your Honor. May it please the court. Ben Chu for Johnny Depp. I'm going to try to make this a little bigger. Hopefully uh, people can read it. Uh, I have a preliminary matter, but it's a very serious one. Court says, okay. Mr. Chu says, it won't take much time. Court says, okay. Mr. Chu says, may I approach? Court, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chu says, Your Honor, we are moving, or Mr. Depp is moving, for the permanent exclusion of Eve Barlow from... The court says, Eve Barlow? Who's Eve Barlow? Mr. Chu says, Eve Barlow is a journalist and Ms. Hurd's current girlfriend who was sitting in the front row. And the court says, okay. Now Judge Ascarati knows what this is about. She's brought back to those that last little bit. Uh, yesterday, and the court ordered to the back row... And then she was later, as I will discuss in a minute, thrown out at 4.31 p.m. by Lieutenant Porter. But if I could explain to the court, now I'm just going to stop here. Every day that I was in that courtroom, they gave us lectures and they gave us repeated lectures. Those lectures were, listen, you're allowed to have your cell phone. You can have your cell phone with you in court, no problem. But the instant your cell phone makes a noise or the instant we see you touching it, doesn't matter what it's about, doesn't matter why you're fiddling with it, you will be removed from the courtroom, and you will not be getting back in. So, um, they were very strict about that. There were people who were removed, and Eve Barlow was one of them. Uh, she was told not to be on her cell phone, and she was on her cell phone. And that was after the court gave that lecture 
out, which I'm sure got passed along to say, Eve Barlow, you've got to move to the back seat and you can't be on any electronics. So what the court is seeing, you will recall yesterday, Mr. Rottenborn came up with what was Eve Barlow's phone. The court says, okay. And he showed you the first document that you're looking at, the shorter version. Courts is right. The text. This is a text from Ms. Duders, Gina Duders. We're not, we understand that she was properly excluded. Um, Mr. Chu can't argue the exclusion because Ms. Duders admitted she watched clips, right? So they're, they're being quite fair here. They're saying, we're not trying to get Ms. Duders back on the stand. We understand that she was properly removed but you need some context here. They say, but this is what he showed your honor saying to the court, representing to the court that Ms. Duders had texted since the start of this trial. And your honor will see that what Mr. Rottenborn showed you did not have the date. If you look at the second document, you will see, your honor will see, I'm sorry, it's an Instagram post. It's an Instagram post. So Mr. Rottenborn and the court judge A says, uh, it's not like I would know the difference, but I thank you for the clarification. So she's she's admitting she doesn't really know the difference between a text and an Instagram post and so forth because she's a judge. She's older. Um, she was a Marine for most of her life. Uh, she's not really probably the most tech person. Um, that just is what it is. But she's saying, you know, I appreciate the clarification. Uh, Ms. Myers says, you're welcome. Uh, Mr. Chu said, I didn't, given my age. <laughs> But, so what Mr. Rottenborn showed you was Ms. Duder's Instagram post without the date. And the second document you're looking at was her post. And it shows the date, which makes it very clear that this was January 8th, 2021. What Mr. Rottenborn presented as from that week was not from that week at all. It was from a year prior, more than a year. Uh, that is... The, uh, that is the material misrepresentation Ms. Duders posted this during the London trial. The court says, okay. Mr. Chu says, that was very disturbing. We believe it was a fraud upon the court. We believe that Mr. Rottenborn, as an officer of the court, should have taken a look at what he was handing up to the court, especially since it was handed to him by someone improperly sitting in the front row, a reporter, and Ms. Hurd's girlfriend. And that's not... That's not where it ends, Your Honor, unfortunately. Ms. Barlow has been passing notes to and from Ms. Hurd from the beginning of the trial, and she's been sending out live tweets throughout the trial. The court, is she still sending out tweets? Mr. Chu, she was as of 4.31 p.m. yesterday when she was removed by this court. If I might approach, and I'll do it one more time. This was Ms. Barlow's post during Ms. Vasquez's opening, and you'll see her. And the court says, well, so she was tweeting from the courtroom? <laughs> the court's going to just cut right through Mr. Chu's arguments. He's got a big, lengthy argument here, and the court's going to say, let me just laser in on the point, sir, and I will give you what you want. So Mr. Chu says she was tweeting in the courtroom. She was sitting right there tweeting during Ms. Vasquez's opening. Your Honor may remember that Ms. Vasquez said that Ms. Uh, Ms. Hurd was giving the performance, uh, would be giving the performance of her lifetime. So she says, in real time, actually, it was Vasquez who was giving the performance of a lifetime of her life. So this is contemporaneous with my colleague's opening. She's live tweeting and getting it all out to the public. And finally, and this will be the last time, I'm sorry, Your Honor will remember that when we first raised this issue, Your Honor ordered people to the back. So Ms. Barlow reluctantly left the first seat and went to the back. And this is the tweet that got her thrown out the last time. What does Amber Heard hope to achieve? She has a gorgeous one-year-old daughter, and she said she was the be uh, beginning the rest of my life in 2021, 12 months after her mother died. And it was at that point that Lieutenant Porter saw her violating the court's order and asked her to leave. I can tell you, those uh, <laughs> the uh, the sheriffs there were not, or the, uh, the bailiffs were not messing around. So I'm guessing that asked her to leave was pretty forceful. Now, Your Honor, if this were just an isolated... Well, actually, I'll take that back. It's more. The court says, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't need to do all this. Just the, court, uh, the court's response is, if you violate the order, you violate the order. 
Mr. Chu says it's more than enough to get her thrown out permanently, but it also takes place in a context. Your Honor will remember the inappropriate disclosure of the sexual assault violations in violation of the protective order, perhaps more egregiously because people weren't on uh, participating by WebEx in this one. Two days before trial, Ms. Heard posted on Instagram her opening argument, and I understand none of the jurors referred to it, but she made very clear in her Instagram post that Mr. Depp's name wasn't mentioned in her op-ed, which was the primary feature of Mr. Rottenborn's opening. That was really egregious. Then, during my opening, to try to throw me off, Miss Bredehoff made an improper objection, saying, you know, and she tried to mention it. The point is, Your Honor, the court's orders must mean something. We're trying to play by the rules here, and it's outrageous what Ms. Barlow had, has done. She was thrown out yesterday, and all we're asking, a very limited form of relief, is that she be barred from attending for the rest of the trial. Now, this is usually a strong argument when you're in a position to make it. The court's orders must mean something, because the court is going to agree with that. The court is going to agree that their powers that they have need to be taken seriously. So the court says, all right. Ms. Bredehoft? So, over to, to Elaine to try to respond to this. Ms. Bredehoft, thank you, Your Honor. I actually had absolutely no clue he was going to raise this this morning, so I'm responding to it cold. First of all, Eve Barlow is not a journalist. Second of all, she's not Ms. Hurd's. The court says, well, you know, I really don't care about all that. Like, I don't care if she's a journalist. I don't care if she's Ms. Hurd's girlfriend. Um, she goes on to say, uh, she was tweeting live in my courtroom. This is 431. Ms. Bredehoft says, I don't know about that, Your Honor. The court says, well, I do. I can read it. 431 on April 14th, 2022. Ms. Bredehoft says, I know she... And when we get a transcript like this, where there's all these clipped responses, where you've got one lawyer who's trying to get their side out and the court's just interrupting, that is telling us that the court is really not happy. Uh, Judge A is not happy with Elaine at all. And I know the deputies took her out because she was texting. That's against the court order. I don't let anybody, if I find anybody else texting, they don't get to come back in. So why would she be able to come back in? Ms. Bredhoff says, and I, I have no knowledge of this, Your Honor. The court says, and I know you didn't. And I understand that. And I mean, the, like I say, when people were passing notes, I thought, well, legal teams. That's why I gave you the first row, because of legal teams. And then more information comes to me in bits and pieces that it's not the legal team. Okay, so move back. And Ms. Bredhoff says, and then, or it says, but she's still texting. So Ms. Bredhoff says, and let me back up just a little bit. Ms. Barlow was not here during the opening. She was not present in the courtroom, and so... The court says, well, she was present when she did this live tweet in my courtroom. Ms. Bredhoff says, and that may be, Your Honor, I have no knowledge of it. I had no knowledge of it, and I have no way to address that, Your Honor. And here's where I love Judge A so much in this one. Uh, Ms. Bredhoff has just said, I have no way to address that. The court says, well, I do. Uh, Ms. Barlow is not coming back into the courtroom during this trial. Ms. Bredhoff says, okay. Court, okay? Ms. Bredhoff, all right, thank you, Your Honor. Court, thank you. Mr. Chu says, thank you, Your Honor. And so that um, that was that. Now, I said that I was kind of surprised that, uh, that, I mean, Eve Barlow really could have ended up in a cell over this. And we're not there yet. We're not at that part. But um, we're going to we're going to get there in just a second, because there's another moment in the transcript of Eve Barlow. And that is, uh, this is on day 15th, which was March 4th, 2022. So quite a bit after this. Uh, so, all right, proceedings. All rise, please be seated and come to order. The court says, all right, good morning. If I could have counsel approach for a moment, please. Sidebar. And um, when you're sitting there in court, I think I was actually in court for this day. Uh, you know, they're like, let's start court and let's start court by blowing out your eardrums with the white noise machine. Not a lot of fun. And you, do, you don't actually at the time know what these are about. You don't have any clue. Um, so the court says, this new PR guy, I don't know who he is, but he just came through the back and he was extremely disrespectful to my sheriffs. 
to my captain, to my lieutenant. Very disrespectful because I told him he can't have his phone out. One of the deputies said uh, he saw him with his phone out. Very disrespectful. I don't want him coming back. Ms. Barlow does not come through security. I thought I made myself very clear about that. She doesn't come through the back. Ms. Barlow came through the back with Ms. Hurd this morning. Ms. Bredehoff says, oh, I didn't know. Of course, says, I don't care if you didn't know, Ms. Bredehoff. This is your responsibility. From now on, only Ms. Hurd, her assistant, and the insurance attorney comes back to the back. Period. If it happens again, I won't have any more come to the back. Understood? Spreadhoff says, completely understood, Your Honor. I apologize. Of course, says, I don't know his name, but he's getting very close to getting kicked out of my courtroom. If you want to let anybody know right now, I'm very upset about that. Nobody disrespects my sheriffs. Spreadhoff says, I totally agree. Do you want me to go talk to him now? Court, absolutely. Do we have anything else? Um, so, Ms. Bredhoff says, yes. And we'll skip ahead a little bit, and Mr. Chu steps in to say, Your Honor, just to clarify, Ms. Barlow was not to come in the courtroom, correct? The court says, no. She wasn't supposed to come in the back way. Ms. Bredhoff says, she's been barred. The court, then she couldn't have come. Ms. Bredhoff says, I'm with you completely, Your Honor. I completely understand where you're coming from. So, uh, that sort of, you know, if you've been kicked out of the courtroom and you then decide to use that and you're still trying to sneak in through the back gate. And I really like this trait of Judge A. It's a trait that you'll find in lots of, um, lots of people, but it's always a good trait. I really appreciate this one. And that is people being protective of their, um, their underlings. And I say underlings, and I don't mean to offer any disrespect, because I can tell you, uh, the bailiffs at the Depp v. Heard trial were amazing. They did a fantastic job. They kept things running. They were fantastic. But, um, you know, when you've got, when you've got that disrespect to the bailiffs, uh, Judge A was instantly going all mama bear on that. She's saying, ooh, you do not have your people disrespecting them. You need to let them know that the bailiffs outrank them. We don't care how much money they make. We don't care how important they think they are. We don't care if they can get a table at, you know, Dorsey or whatever it is. Um, they just, they're outranked. And I tell young lawyers this, like when you walk into the courtroom, everybody in that room outranks you. The sheriffs or bailiffs outrank you. Uh, the court clerk outranks you. The judge definitely outranks you. Opposing counsel outranks you. Um, everybody. So if you think you're going to pull rank because you are the biggest, you know, swaggering person, you've got a fine, shiny suit, all of that stuff. That's not how this works. You, um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I kind of thought that was interesting that we got that little bit of additional uh, detail on this one. And it's just kind of worth... Um, worth going over. Uh, this this would have been such a hard trial for witnesses to avoid getting any coverage uh, because if you're just active on social media, there was tons and tons of stuff. But Ms. Duders, because of this deceit by, you know, because of this, um, you know, because of the court getting the wrong impression here was asked questions that nobody else got asked and she answered honestly that she had seen some clips, so she got removed. Anyway, um, I'm going to keep going through these. There's lots of little moments that I spot. I'm going to try to sort of focus on the moments that I think are interesting or, um, you know, pivotal, as opposed to just sort of going over everything. Although if people... Um, I have had some requests to go over this in detail. So let me know if there's enough interest. I will do um, like a live stream of just going through sidebar by sidebar by sidebar. I think that'll be less interesting. But if that's something people would like, then I'm willing to do it. Um, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this to be interesting and educational. Um, there's all sorts of buttons below. All of them uh, are good to click, except for the down button. Uh, click all of the buttons except that one. But um, please like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to see more content. 
I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, the CCFR, CAME, Canada's National Firearms Association, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sites and Arms Limited and Jane Babe and Luxor. And at the $20 level, Lindsay Metcalf, Larry Kalniak, Here's a Coin Legal Witcher, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, Vicky, and Dorky Dane. Thank you uh, as well to my $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching. Hope this has armed you with knowledge. See you next time.